Hi y'all, welcome or welcome back to Feelin' Froggy Knits. My name is Maya and today we're gonna knit and chat. Well, y'all, I am back in the Project Palace. I was just on a trip to my hometown of Lexington, Kentucky. I had such a lovely time, we'll get into it today. But I thought I would, you know, take some time, sit down here with y'all, chat, work on my Oslo hat. This is my third Oslo hat that I'm making and it has already been claimed by a family member. So I'm sorry if you looked at this and thought it was the prettiest thing ever, but my Aunt Alexis has already claimed it. I'm so excited to finish this and send it off to her. But anyways, I thought today we could talk about a bunch of stuff, you know, stuff about knitting, stuff about life and just knit while doing it. It's a rainy, gloomy day here in Northern California, and so I've got my little brown sugar, oat milk, espresso, whatever you call it. Make sure to grab your knitting or crocheting, grab something cozy, and let's chat. I just want to address, I've got my stitch marker right here so that we know how much I get done. Probably won't be a lot, but that is okay. First topic that I want to dive in today and I know this is gonna get like real deep real fast, but I wanna talk about mental health. If you saw my last video, my video that I put out about two weeks ago, two or three weeks ago, making my little Valentine's Day vest, at the end of the video, I kind of touch on and discuss how I've been doing mentally and it's not great. <laughs> Spoiler alert, it's not great. But I just wanted to kind of chat about my experience with mental health today and what that has meant for me in my hobbies, in my life. You know, I won't get into too gory details because obviously this is my personal life and I do want to keep that private. That being said, I do want to share what I have gone through with mental health. So I'll kind of start at the beginning in September of 2022. Some family visited and what happened was I stayed up all night like worrying, I guess, just couldn't get that like adrenaline, heart racing feeling out of me. And so I just stayed up all night because they were driving through the night. And then from that point on, I could not eat or drink anything, at least for the first part of the day, which is very important because I work outside, I hike, for my job. So I wasn't eating or drinking anything for the first part of my day. Usually by the afternoon or so, my appetite would kind of come back. I would be able to drink water at least. That continued for about two months of me just trying to work through it, hoping that it would stop. And then classically, like anybody does when they're going through something like this, when they're feeling a lot of nausea, I was having diarrhea. Sorry to say. <laughs> I was having those symptoms and so I was like, I have, you know, when something like that goes wrong, your immediate thought is the worst thing ever, obviously. So I went to, oh, I have, you know, a horrible disease, whatever the case may be. So I went to urgent care. They did a bunch of tests on me. I was perfectly fine. And then finally I saw a psychiatrist. He did like the questionnaire for anxiety, for depression, and I scored like very high <laughs> for all of those things. I was like, wow, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, that makes sense. So then I was able to find a therapist and also a psychiatrist. I got on medication and I've been seeing, you know, a therapist since November at this point. I am four months into therapy. Y'all, I mean, as you saw from my last video, I'm not I'm not 100% better. I have improved tremendously from where I was in September. And the thing is, is that the more people that I talked to about my experience, about my symptoms, the more people came forward and said, oh, I've had that exact same experience or I've had a very similar experience. And to me, that is just like, why are we not talking about it? Because 
I was freaking out, y'all. I mean, two months of not being really able to eat or drink, that's really scary. It's what our body wants to do is eat and drink. It wants to survive. And so when our body is like not letting us do that and telling us so viciously that I'm not going to let you eat or drink until you address this, it's a lot. It's a lot to take in and it's a lot to be like, wow, my body was like so fatigued, so ready to just give up. It just drop stitch, first drop stitch of this hat. Good thing I know how to fix drop stitches now. I just think the more we discuss, the more we talk about our symptoms, what we're feeling, the more we talk about that, the less stigma there will be. And I will say I am having to address anxiety and depression at a time when mental health is very much more taken seriously than it ever has, which I just cannot be grateful enough for. There is a stigma behind it and we really should talk about it more. And I want to be a resource. I want to be somebody that you can come to. If you have had those symptoms, seriously, please DM me on Instagram, talk to me, put a comment down below if you're fine with having you know that be public information. But if you want it to be private, send me a DM please. When we don't discuss these issues, when we don't talk about these things, we feel so alone. And I might start crying. <laughs> we feel so alone. And it turns out that there are so many people out there who love us and who care about us and who have actually gone through very similar situations. If you are struggling with mental health and feel like you are alone, I am here for you. I am with you. Please talk to me if you want to. If you don't feel like it, there are so many resources out there to help you. Yeah, let's let's talk about how we're feeling. Let's talk about mental health and let's get better. Let's help each other. I would love to create a wonderful little happy community on here. Let's get away from the crying. Let's get away from the serious topic. Why don't we? Next up, talk about the trip that I just went on, which is which was to my hometown of Lexington. Obviously, I still struggle almost daily with my mental health and with anxiety, that kind of stuff, but that doesn't mean I didn't have the best time in Lexington. I went there for a bachelorette party. My friend Lena is getting married in May and she had her little bachelorette party. It was like a combo bachelor bachelorette party. It was so much fun. We had such a blast going around Lexington, bar hopping, drinking. Yeah, it was so much fun playing little bachelorette games. I got to drink out of a penis straw. It was like quintessential bachelorette weekend. So thank you so much, Lena, for inviting me to come. I had such a blast. One of the things that actually came out of the trip was I hung out with my friend Ona, who I haven't seen in years because, you know, a little pandemic. We worked at a couple restaurants together in Lexington, and she is a crafty ass bitch. I mean, there is no other way to slice or dice it. Ona has been knitting, I think, since she was 10 and spinning since she was 11 or 12. Like, she entered in yarn into like Rhinebeck to be judged, and I think she got like second place in the junior. Like, she's the real deal. And actually, I will have a video coming out with her soon, so please, you know, stay tuned for that. But one of the things that I got to do while in Lexington was visit their yarn shop there, which is called Rebel. I don't know how long it has been in Lexington, but I know it's moved locations before it used to be downtown. I actually went there twice while I was there because remember when I said I was not going to buy yarn? Anyways, oh, I do want to do a little bit of a haul for you guys. So I got to go to Rebuild twice. The first time I went with my sister. I mean, I spent probably an hour in there looking around and it's not that big. <laughs> um, but they've got such a wonderful yarn selection. They have so much hand dyed yarn. They have one whole room that's like almost all hand dyed yarn. So we're just focusing on my knitting real quick. This is a knit and chat and I've just been chatting. Oh my gosh. First time I went, I went a little crazy because I saw this yarn and I was like, okay, from here, it doesn't look like much, but if you get a little closer. Oh, 
the camera will never be able to do it justice, but it looks like an oil slick. <laughs> you know, like on the pavement when there's just, you know, gas or oil from a car. I think that's what it looks like, but obviously in the best way possible. <laughs> But I saw this and I knew that it just had to be the most scrumptious pair of socks. I am somebody who needs a little contrasting heel toe cuff. I just think a hand knitted pair of socks is not complete without a contrasting heel toe cuff. I did not realize that this was a, uh, it was 80% merino, 20% silk when I bought it. So it's not going to be the most durable heel toe cuff because it is the part that sees the most wear Sorry, I wasn't flipping you off. <laughs> the heel and the toe, you know, those are parts that see the most wear and tear. But I already have somebody who I'm going to knit a pair of socks for, and I've already told her that she needs to be careful. Maybe that it'll just be a house pair of socks or, you know, just like a fancy pair of socks. I don't know. This teal really brings out these beautiful teals that are in here, and it was dark enough, and it has a little bit of variegation in it you know, it being hand dyed. It's showing up more of like an icy blue, but it, it really is a teal blue in person. It is called Harbor, but it is so soft. Obviously it's a merino and silk, so it's just silky soft and smooth. I was browsing around looking at all the cute little mini hanks. They had so many many hanks there. I saw this as a large hank, loved it. I was like, I cannot buy three hanks of yarn. I'm on a dang yarn band and I'm gonna buy three hanks, no way. But then I saw they had a mini hank of it. This color, first of all, it's the color of my nails, which I just now noticed that. It is this beautiful periwinkle that has these insane speckles throughout. Oh man. Oh, this is how I'm becoming, I was watching, I was watching Alt Knots last night, I think, and I saw her do this. I was like, oh yeah, you can just hold it all together so that you're not like trying to show the hank. Okay, here it is. <gasps> Those speckles, it's like there are yellow and pink and blue, and I think I saw some orange speckles in there. This as a heel toe cuff. Get out of town. That's it for the yarn for that first trip, but I also, I had to get these stitch markers that have the state of Kentucky on them. I can put one of those safety pin stitch markers on there and make it so that I can use it differently, like very versatile little buggers. During that trip, I also purchased some stoppers, some like needle stoppers. I got strawberries, <laughs> I got little leaves, and I got macaroons, but I can't find the strawberries in the leaves. I feel like I left them at my mom's house or something. Very sad, very disappointing. I do have the macaroons. Here they are on my seat. Oh, oh my gosh. Don't you just want to take a little bite out of it? Forbidden macaroon. There are so many knitting things that I'm like, I just want to bite that or like, is that weird? Okay. That was my first trip that I made to Rebel. The second trip was with Ona because she was like, oh, do you wanna do you wanna learn how to spin? Yeah, just just spin real quick. Oh, yeah, you wanna learn? Y'all, I thought I was years away from learning how to spin. It was definitely a goal of mine that I wanted to achieve at some point because eventually I want to be the entire process of clothes making. I want to raise sheep, I want to shear them, I want to process the wool, I want to spin yarn, and I want to knit a sweater, a garment, what have you. I want to be a part of that full process. And I've actually seen a lot of people on YouTube spinning recently. Obviously, Taylor at Wool Needles Hands has been getting at it with the spinning. And then Casey at Young Folk Knits Podcast, she just put out a video about beginner spinning. Anyways, it's just something that was very far away in my head. And then Ona was like, do you want me to to teach you. I'm just never around people who have that ability to teach how to spin, who have that knowledge. I could look up a YouTube video, sure, but just, I don't know, getting it all started, it was so easy to learn with her right there. During that second trip to Rebel, I bought this Nube. It's Malabrigo's just wool, and 
Y'all, I'm going to be putting a video out of me learning how to spin with Ona, hopefully coming soon, but I called this noob. And then I watched Casey, she's like, Malabrigo Nube? I was like, what? <laughs> what? That little Kentucky coming out, I mean. I bought this raw wool whatever, pre-dyed, and in Casey's video, she actually suggest to not use this and I understand where she's coming from. Ona explained it to me really well. If it's got dye on it already, that means it is adding more weight, more things to grab a hold of, and so it's harder to spin, I guess. It catches, things like that. I don't know, but because I've never spun before, it worked really well for me because I knew nothing else. And I've done that before in my videos, like with sock knitting, some people prefer toe up, some people prefer cuff down. I like to cuff down, but I never tried anything else. So here's the wool and the yarn. I'm just gonna give you a little sneak peek. Now I'll show you the whole thing. Here's what it's looking like. <gasps> Y'all, I cannot tell you how proud I am of making that yarn. Now, Ona really suggested for me to try on the drop spindle first because it's way less of an investment than you know, a $600 spinning wheel, say, I think that was like 30 or 40 bucks for the little drop spindle, 16 bucks for the wool. I mean, you know, it's a $50 investment rather than way more money. I think I enjoy using the drop spindle so much. One, because I haven't used a spinning wheel very much. Ona did teach me how to use one. With the drop spindle, it just feels so visceral. I don't know if that's the right word. It's the only word that my little brain can come up with right now, but it just feels like, feels like you're a part of history. Ona and I talked about different animals. I mean, different yarn, everything. We talked about so much stuff. One thing that we only touched on a little bit is the history of spinning and how this was most likely probably the first form of being able to spin something was a drop spindle. So you think back, you think ships, every ship has to have rope, which means the rope has to be spun and everything, every, any garment, anything ever had to be spun. And forever it was spun by hand. You know that TikTok trend, like there's one of this one girl and she's braiding her hair and it's like women from centuries past also braiding their hair. It feels like that. It's as if I'm, you know, connecting with with the past, with people of the past. You know, again, with knitting, it's you're thinking more about where where your clothes come from, where things come from, how long it took to make that thing, who made it, and realizing that buying a $20 sweater can feel a little insulting because look, it's, I can't tell you how many hours it's taken me to just spin this. And now you think of spinning a whole sweater's quantity worth, spinning a whole village's quantity worth of yarn. I digress. We really do not need to be getting into the history of it all. <laughs> but that, that stuff is so interesting. Be on the lookout for that video of me learning how to spin. It's gonna be fun, entertaining, informative, actually, because I have an expert on. <laughs> Next thing I wanna chat about, so if you watch my previous videos, you know that my boyfriend and I are currently unemployed. How cute, oh my gosh, cute. Cute, fun, fresh. We have been kind of busting our butts for the last two years, working a lot of overtime, weekends, that kind of stuff. So we're sitting here comfortably and we are able to travel, which obviously is what I've been doing. I went to Washington with Drew because he had not met my dad yet. So <laughs> he met my dad and my whole dad's side of the family there. And then I went to Lexington most recently for my friend's bachelorette and then to also just see friends and family in Lexington. So lastly, our, you know, last trip of the, of our little unemployment time off, hopefully, we are going to visit his mom, his dad and his sister and his other sister who all live in different places. <laughs> so we are going to make a big road trip out of it. We were originally going to take our cats with us just like 
we, we thought that two weeks was just too long to be away from home and they've never gone on the road before. We decided we would wanna do something shorter at first and then you know hopefully work up to a longer trip because we would love to be able to travel with our kitties, but we know that not all cats love it and so we wanna just like test the waters, see if they would tolerate it, I guess. On this trip, we will be going to Nevada, Texas, and then San Diego. So we'll be driving through Arizona, New Mexico, you know, all these southwestern U.S. states. We'll be going through Vegas one day. We'll be staying one night in Sedona, going to El Paso, Texas. So it's like barely Texas, but uh, El Paso, and then to San Diego. If y'all have any yarn suggestions for any of those places in the Southwest, if you just have one and I, I'm not going there, but you are like, you need to know about this, please leave them in the comments down below. I'm not gonna be buying a bunch of yarn, but I'm totally in for a skein or two of sock yarn to commemorate trips. So please leave yarn shop suggestions in the comments down below. Yeah, it's gonna be such a fun trip. Hopefully I'm gonna get a lot of knitting done because we are going to be on the road for many hours. <laughs> I would love to hit up some of your favorite shops during my trip. Speaking of buying yarn when I'm not supposed to, I kind of wanted to give a little bit of an update on my New Year's resolutions, see what I've completed so far in, in, in the two months. <laughs> Since I decided I wanted to make some New Year's resolutions. I know one of them was to not buy yarn. Pfft, failed miserably at that. The knitting with yarn from my stash, I do believe is going well. I am buying new yarn, but I have mostly been knitting with my older yarn, which I guess is good. I don't know, that really defeats the purpose of buying new yarn, doesn't it? We won't get into that right now. We really don't need to talk about my mental health as it relates to knitting. I'm currently making the seed stitch wrap from Pearl Soho with yarn that was gifted to me for Christmas. I'm making some gloves for my boyfriend that is using some Cascade 220 that I've had in my stash for like a year. I think I'm doing pretty well with the knitting from my stash. I just really need to stop buying or <laughs> yarn. When you buy more yarn, it means your stash gets bigger and it means you have more to make. Maya, duh. Let's see, what other resolutions? Oh, I've not been doing the splits. I do want to start like regularly exercising again. And I think the splits will come with that. <laughs> like the stretching and, and all that kind of stuff. The running 10 miles, again, haven't really exercised that much, but I would like to like to get back into it. It was really nice to be in Lexington when it was like 70 degrees because I was like, oh no, it turns out that I do want to be outside. It's just, I don't want to be outside when it's cold and I don't want to be exercising outside when it's cold. Y'all, it is the gloomiest day here. It was snowing. It literally snowed here the last couple days. Now it's all gloomy and rainy. I don't even know what, oh, Oh my gosh, my trying new things resolutions? I've been kicking ass at that stuff. Okay, so I knitted a pair of socks for the first time, which I had not done before. I started a swatch of lace work. So <laughs> I learned how to crochet. I have not yet completed a crochet project, but I actually got the hang of a single crochet, double crochet, half double crochet, you know, doing the loops and all the all the things that are involved in, in making a crocheted garment, whatever. I have my practice crochet here with me. It is, wow, it is like matted. It's so dense. I really am just, I was just stabbing that needle in there. But I also think I was like adding row, like adding an extra like stitch to the end. So it's like kind of got a little trapezoid shape going on. Single crochets are down here, double crochets, and then I start some half double crochets in there at some point. I will say once I got the groove of it, it was so fun because when I'm knitting, I usually don't have to look or don't have to pay as much attention to what I'm doing as I do when I'm crocheting. So when I knit, I just like can't listen to music anymore. Sometimes I get in those moods, but it's just like, I guess the knitting motion with my hands is so strong. <laughs> What the hell am I saying? It's so strong that it's just like the muscle memory is there. But with crocheting, it's not. So I was able to like listen to some bumpin' music and crochet and like 
put my hook in with like with the beat. It was a lot of fun. I was like, damn, I could really get into this. One thing that wasn't on my New Year's resolutions was to freaking learn how to spin and I did it. I know how to spin now. I can make my own dang yarn. We are going above and beyond. Now, I really need to get into sewing. I've decided I, I want to get into sewing before spring slash summer time because I am going to be like bulk buying some linen and making myself some dresses, pants. Oh my gosh, I need me a good pair of linen pants. It is a struggle out here being a little 5'3 girl and, and needing a pair of pants, okay? <laughs> I get short and I still gotta cup the dang pants. So I really want to get into sewing for that very reason. It is sad because that means my beautiful sewing machine is currently sitting on a shelf, which like, I know that that's gotta be some kind of sin. If you've been watching the Feel and Froggy Knits channel, you know that waking a sleeping cat and putting a sewing machine on a shelf and not using it, those are the two sins currently uh, in, in my book. I really need to get on to that. I can only mentally handle so much and so I'm not gonna push myself, but I really want to. <laughs> Lastly, I wanted to chat about different YouTube channels that I really enjoy while I am knitting. So I thought I would share some of them with you today. If y'all aren't familiar, make sure to check them out. The first is the Prickly Stitch podcast. That's with Haley and Katie. They are both very knowledgeable and have just some beautiful projects and yarn and personalities. So I recommend checking that one out. Next, I've got Ginger Hook with Laura. She's also a newer channel. She just posted her third podcast ever. I haven't watched it yet. Very excited to do so. She's another one, just great quality videos. You know, she's fun, she's funny, like a great gal to watch. Then I have Handmade by Florence, obviously with Florence. I don't know, she like feels and looks so ethereal and then she's just got that voice to go along with it. Am I crushing right now? <laughs> Maybe a little bit. Wow, she can crank some stuff out. Her projects, I think it was the uh, podcast I saw or something where she showed this knitted dress that she made. Pfft. Oh my gosh, you wouldn't catch me dead knitting stockinette for a million miles. You know, cut to me doing that eventually. Up next, I have this YouTuber who I've been watching for a while now. I love her channel so much. It's called Eliza OK with Eliza. She's based in the Bay Area and I'm in Northern California, so maybe that's why I love her so much. But her videos are so fun and the stuff that she makes is so bright and colorful. And she's really creative too with her stuff. She's not just making like patterns by other people. She's experimenting and doing fun stuff. Her advent calendar video, so, so good. I was like, honestly watching them, I was like, I know what it takes to edit and to knit and to do all that. I was just like really impressed with her and like being able to consistently upload like that for a month, I mean, props to her and the videos were great too. So like, yeah, just really enjoy her channel. Make sure to check her out. And lastly, this is one of my very favorites, which is the channel called We Grow Wild with, with Martina. Uh, she lives in Italy. She's from Italy, I'm pretty sure, with her partner Mika. I believe he's Swedish. And then their two dogs are Mojo and Mita, I think. I wasn't able to like find their names written anywhere, so I just went off. I like tried to find them and tried to find them saying their names, but please forgive me if I say their names wrong, but what an absolutely lovely channel. Martina has just such a way with words. She captures us in, she brings us along on her wild, wonderful journeys of knitting and foraging and uh, practicing land reliancy, as they say, uh, as Martina says in her videos. I highly, highly recommend that channel for that reason and and she is just such a light and again another like very ethereal being to me on you know just out in the world those are all of my recommendations for now if y'all have any please feel free to leave them in the comments down below. I am always looking for new channels to subscribe to and to watch, so that would be wonderful if you could help me out some. <laughs> 
I love these channels so much. They put out a variety of videos, whether it's creating stuff or podcasts. Uh, most of them put out very nice knitting podcasts, which actually I was chatting with my friend Ona, who is the one who taught me how to spin. And we just decided we have to make a podcast together. It was so much fun to get together, to chat with her. Yeah, we just had such a blast. So I think we are going to look into doing a podcast together. Now, a podcast is something that I think I wanted to do myself, but I just felt like I had, I don't have enough stuff to show. I'm a fairly slow knitter. I'm a slow creator, which I'm not mad about. Like I love that I take my time. I thought just me in a podcast might be a little bit boring. So after I, I made that video with Ona, we were just like, oh yeah, we work really well together. I think, I think this can work. So we are going to try our own podcast. So please keep a lookout for that. We'll probably just upload it to my YouTube channel. I've already got my frogs here with me. Is that what my community is called? My frogs? My little frogs. So cute. Keep an eye out for a little podcast, a little lily podcast with the frogs. Get it? Because frogs and lily pads. I feel like I've been chatting with y'all for a while and you probably have stuff to do. I know I have things I need to do. Let's see how far we got on the on the Oslo hat. It looks we got about, I would say about an inch done. What would you say? That's about an inch. I did just say I was a slow maker, so friggin' props to me, I guess. I had such a lovely time sitting here with you, knitting and chatting, talking about life and all of the above. If you like this video, make sure to like it. And if you wanna see more of me, make sure to subscribe to my channel. I try to put out new videos every week for your viewing pleasure. Thank you all so much for joining me and for showing me patience. I cannot believe all of the nice comments that y'all left on my last video. Seriously, it brings tears to my eyes. I just am feeling so very grateful for the community that we're building here and I cannot wait to just see it blossom and bloom. Have a wonderful night or day wherever you are and I will see y'all on the next one. Bye!